Good morning and welcome to The Art of Composition. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. I came across a Thomas Kegler video last night on YouTube. It was an interesting video and I love the painting. It was one of those speed process videos where they speed up the process of creating a painting. At the beginning of the video, it shows Thomas Kegler dropping the 14 line armature using a ruler. That's how easy this stuff is, folks. That's why I love this process of learning design using the harmonic armature. You can learn it very quickly. It doesn't require calculators, calipers, or math degrees or an engineering degree to use design. It's a user-friendly system of design. So if you want to get more information about classical skill-based design, start with the harmonic armature. If you like design, once you learn that, you can dive into dynamic symmetry. I'm going to relabel dynamic symmetry as an advanced system of design because the harmonic armature is just so much easier to use. But anyway, I want to look at the Thomas Kegler painting that he showed in this video, and I want to quickly point out what he's doing here. So let me get started. As I mentioned quite often, when you're looking at paintings and you're analyzing works of art, look for dominant lines. For example, in this painting you have a dominant diagonal line right here. You have a dominant horizontal line right here. And then of course you have your dominant vertical here. In the video, Thomas Kegler shows how he's getting those dominant lines using the armature. Let me show you. If you want to learn more about the harmonic armature and you're looking for an artist to study, I recommend Thomas Kegler because he's very open about what he's doing. His paintings are stunning to say the least and he's using the harmonic armature in many of his works of art. He mentions in his PDFs that he, for the most part, he uses root rectangles but from what I got from the PDFs he uses the harmonic armature far more and my guess is because it's easier to use and it's so universal it really is it's sort of like comparing the iPhone to every other phone out there and the way apples are designed they're very user friendly and I feel this way about the harmonic armature because like I said it's repetitive but it gives you a quick visual interpretation of what you can do in design for example in dynamic symmetry when you look at a root rectangle, you only have a few divisions. When you look at the harmonic armature, the 14 line grid, you see all of your intersecting points at once. It's like getting a, it's, you're seeing everything at once, so it gives you more variety and it's much easier to use. So that's why I'm going in this direction. I want artists to actually use design because dynamic symmetry is wonderful and it's wonderful to talk about it and it's cool to watch how it works, but the question is, are artists even going to take the time to learn it to, to get to a place where they're actually applying it? And in most cases, they don't. And when I say this, this is coming from teaching this stuff for years. And the only, I got to be honest, the only people that have gotten back to me about dynamic symmetry are engineers and mathematicians, not actual artists. And this is why... I think a lot of artists are using the harmonic armature far more than dynamic symmetry. I'm looking for information in real world practice, not not theory. And you know, moving outside of the Barnstone arena, Barnstone's great, but I you've got to go outside of that and you have to see what's going on in the art world today. It's great if you want to study Vermeer and Caravaggio, all that stuff's great, but you know, again to be honest, I don't think most artists today care about that stuff. It's You have to understand the historical reference and where it comes from, but artists want to see modern artists and how they're using these systems of design. Otherwise, they're just going to look at it and go, well, you know, that's Vermeer. That was great 400 years ago. But what are artists using today? And this is what they're using today. And yes, they use dynamic symmetry, but I believe they're using the harmonic far more than dynamic symmetry because you can use it on the fly. You can use it if you're doing plein air painting and all you need is a ruler. It doesn't matter the size of your sketch pad. It doesn't matter the size of your canvas. 
It's so user friendly and it's so universal. Something to think about when you're learning this information. All right, so I mentioned that you have a dominant diagonal, a dominant horizontal, and a dominant vertical. Let me show you where he's getting those. I'm going to convert this to blue because I love blue. Thicken that line and make it solid. The dominant vertical is right here. He's getting that from these intersecting diagonal lines right there. And when you watch the video, you see him draw the armature out. The dominant horizontal line is coming from this division here in the armature. Right there. Bring that down just a notch. There you go. Your dominant diagonal line is coming from here. And I'll just bring this all the way down to this point. So there's your three main lines. From those three main lines, you can fine tune it. Like I said, you have a, you have another horizontal here. You have horizontal lines coming here in the sky in the clouds and you have more right here, but his dominant lines were derived from that armature and he arrived at this very quickly. He didn't whip out calculators. He didn't whip out calipers. He didn't have to open up a book on engineering. He zipped out his grid using a ruler and then he started designing. He got his painting out there. It wasn't this big ordeal. That's going to be it for today. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it as always.